Thank you. <laughs> Breathing test? Okay, seems to be fine. Um, remember me? Uh, I, I made another introduction slide, but I just skipped past that. Uh, and uh, I already did my little show of hands of uh, who was like familiar with Ansible things. Um, I, I would ask for another little show like um, who who runs Ansible bare bones versus like having some integration in say Foreman or Tower or uh, these things that are there. Who, who is actually on the command line most of the time? Okay quite a number of people, and, and who, who has actually in their production use any of these more like integrated tool chains? F few people, okay. Interesting, interesting. Um, I mean, I, I totally get it, like um, using Ansible from the CLI is a super flexible and powerful and you can do lots of amazing things, but um, I will be showing uh, the free tower and I, I will make a bit of a case for why this might also be uh, interesting to some of you people, maybe. Uh, who knows? Um, just a little recap. Um, Ansible, of course, super tool for all of us. Um, makes it so easy to, to uh, model the things that we want our automation to, to do. It it's feels like writing scripts. And uh, but we, but we have this this templating right in the scripts. We we have all the all our variables that can be filled using lots of magic, and it's and it's just super nice. It's fun, um, and I guess this this is why uh, these days Ansible seems to be the most um, popular uh, tool among these um, data center automation tools. Orchestration also super natural, easy, right? You just you just tell the tool, hey. Uh, first do this on those machines, then go to these other machines, do these things, and it's and it's readable. It it makes sense. You can you can reason about it. Uh, it's just great. Um, there's a lot of modules that that are just built in. So if you if you get Ansible, you uh, already have the power to control uh, your infrastructure on all kinds of cloud providers, be they uh, the big. Uh, commercial providers or your OpenStack or what have you um, that all just works. Uh, there's support for lots of uh, uh, infrastructure components like uh, network components, uh, storages. Uh, it's, it's really wide range. Um, Ansible does uh, cater to your identity management problems, monitoring things. It's it's really a great variety and, and you don't have to install any any additional packages. It's just in. Um, I will just run a super quick uh, demo, nothing fancy here. Um, I have made a very uh, simple um, playbook that doesn't do much, it just connects to uh, what I have uh, dubbed my web server here and, and installs a very simple uh, web service. At the moment there is nothing here. Uh, like the port. Oh, so this is full screen now too. Um, what you what you cannot see is that this is trying to uh, open port eighty eighty one, and if I run this cool playbook uh, for my whoops, uh, whom I call customer A, then it should magically uh, install a very good implementation of web services using Python and hooray, a beautiful website emerges. Uh, so yeah, Ansible also very good to uh, impress your mom. Um, but now I have another customer who also wants my great product, um, but they have some different guidelines and they, uh, they won't allow me to just, um, uh, let's try it and uh, will not work because um, yeah, I cannot, I cannot just uh, use sudo without a password. Of course, this is no problem for Ansible. Um, I'll just tell it to ask me, ask, uh, spent too much time abroad, sorry. Uh, just ask me, and uh, well, 
password guidelines being what they want, uh, well, what they are, it's, uh, it's a bit of a chore. Um, uh, no typo. Oh, oh, it was a typo. See? Uh, So it still works, it wasn't as much fun, especially if I do this all day, right? Like, and so I'll be entering long passwords lots of time. Of course, I can, I can copy paste it from my password manager, but still, I have to unlock that too, so eh. Um, still works, can I, can I even change the URL here? No. Um, you have to take my word on this. Um, it totally, no, eh, no. Um, that spawned another service. Uh, but it, it gets a little crazy um, when I when I go to the next customer who also needs uh, pseudo passwords, but um, oh no, this uh, and for this customer I, I need to store uh, secrets in a in a vault encrypted variable file. Uh, have you have you done this? Have you have you used vault? It's pretty cool. Ansible vault. Um, just allows me to have to have encrypted files in my in my Git repo, um, but now I need a passphrase too. So all easy. Uh, okay, since these are really sensible and and they're in, on GitHub, I need to have a a pretty long key. Uh, Hooray, but oh no, um, this customer also doesn't allow me to use my SSH key. So I will also I think that's what it is. You get the idea. Uh, the good news being I do not I will not have to enter this because I can just by default I can press enter and it will use the pseudo password and it will just work. <coughs> but yeah, it's it's all a bit of a hassle. Um, and uh, and I argue this is not all. So ideally, you don't have to contend with all of this, but uh, there's other things that can be a little not fun with Ansible. For example, um, everybody is free to run Ansible from their own, own home directory or even their own laptop, right? And and you never know, hey, uh, colleague X is, is working on, on a new feature and they have a branch but uh, they, w w when they uh, roll it to the test environment next time, they didn't rebase to master, so they are overwriting things I just merged, and it, it can be a whole mess. Uh, because there's, there's uh, no good protection against this kind of thing, you have to, you have to uh, establish some process on your end to take care of this. Um, also, uh, you never know whether uh, your teammate is uh, currently running Ansible against the same infrastructure that you do, and, and that can be confusing um, uh, with the results of the respective runs, because it's, it's not really transparent what's going on. Um, dealing with the environment for your Ansible can also be a pain, depending on, on how crazy you get with, with your code. Uh, do you need certain Python libraries so that your custom filter plugins can really work. Uh, what about the Ansible version? Do, do you, uh, how do you uh, fare with upgrading Ansible? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a garden variety uh, type of issue. Um, there are some uh, proje projects that try to make this easier, um, but uh, with Tower, Tower takes a whole lot of that away. Um, you see it shortly. Also, I don't know if, if some of you are in the habit of passing uh, configuration parameters on the command line using dash E and, and uh, adding extra vars. That's, that's pretty powerful, but um, can also be pretty chaotic and, and you'll find yourself having a bash history uh, of Ansible run commands with all kinds of different options. And, uh, and yeah, if, if that is the way you organize your work, well, uh, you'll eventually find yourself in a situation of, of saying, I, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Um, I, I feel that this is really not, not a productive way to go. So, 
Um, with all this in mind, let's now finally look at what this is all about, which is Ansible Tower, or rather AWX, which is um, supposedly the open source upstream of Tower. So um, AWX is actually where, where, the, where, where it's at, where the new um, things are introduced. And, and, the, and Tower, uh, which you have to buy from Red Hat, um, supposedly has, has no uh, features beyond what AWX gives you. So um, you should be on a, on a good side here. Um, as far as uh, support for stuff goes, um, I also will say that Tower apparently is uh, quite pricey. If you, if you have a large infrastructure, you pay for Tower by the number of machines that you are managing. So um, that can add up. So um, yeah, AWX uh, can, be, can be a good choice if, uh, if budget is at all an issue. So what is it? AWX gives you a service, a central server that runs Ansible for you. And so that's it in a nutshell. You have a server, it runs Ansible, and uh, it gives you a web interface and a REST API. Uh, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Um, let's, uh, let's just see if we can, oops, yeah. If we can, instead of doing this whole shebang with, with all the ask me for this and ask me for this other thing, um, for the same customer, uh, we, can, we can ask uh, AWX to run it for us. Um, let's say in check mode. And, uh, and it takes a sweet time. Um, there's reasons for that. And I will show you those later. But um, so yeah, it's 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 not quite as as your your workflow will be a little slower, and and you will have to be waiting for um, AWX to get all its ducks on a row. Uh, but you're not entering passwords, and I will also show you why that is. Hmm. should have prepared break music or something. Just wait for my next demo when I'll be installing AWX live. It will uh, takes, a, takes a little longer than this. Oops. Well, that, that is shorter than I anticipated. I feel there should have been more output. So, um, you know, what you can always do is uh, give me the standard output of this job. Ah, much better. So, so something got cranked up and uh, the CLI didn't manage to show me the uh, output just in time. Uh, awkward, but uh, yeah, moving on. I, I think I forgot to make the uh, ritual offering to the live demo gods this morning, so might be rough. So this is this is how how you can imagine um, it it works. It's, it's pretty simple. There's there's AWX and Ansible comes bundled with AWX. And uh, what I did just now was I sent um, API requests from the command line. This uh, this Tower CLI. Uh, Um, so this is just a simple Python script that's publicly available. Um, you install it wherever, and uh, you control your AWX service. Um, but you can also just use a browser and uh, look at the web interface. Um, it looks kind of like this. Yeah, the, the default password is password, it's, it's great. Um, I didn't go for this because this instance is uh, publicly on the internet, so, yeah. It is shorter than the root password I used earlier because I made that long on purpose um, to make it look silly, sorry. Okay. Um, 
actually, when you when you enter it for the first time, you get a sweet dashboard and an overview of what's going on. Um, we will look into this uh, a little more, but uh, yeah. So this is basically one of the ways uh, you can use AWX, and and uh, you will be using the web interface quite a bit if you if you go for AWX. Uh, okay, so um, so yeah, I, I did uh, launch a job from the CLI. Uh, let's just do the same um, here. So uh, in a nutshell, you you will always have to prepare the kinds of jobs you run from AWX, and and you create uh, job templates for that. So. Uh, I did that, and I have one template, and it is to install the simple web service for customer C. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, it's not super readable, right? Is that better? <laughs> Gotta be. Um, so yeah, uh, I uh, I made sure that I am using the right inventory. Um, and by the way, uh, this is this is one of the differences when you when you uh, commit to AWX. Um, these these Ansible runs that are triggered, um, they do not just uh, use the inventory as you have added it to uh, to your Git repository. Um, and 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 in case you have a a script. That that uh, builds a dynamic inventory for you from I don't know your cloud provider or what have you. Uh, even that is not directly run in this instance. Uh, instead, AWX will always want to manage the inventories for you and uh, independently of the actual runs of Ansible. So you can tell AWX now, please load the inventory for customer C. And, and it does that, and then I can launch jobs using this inventory that, that was generated from my uh, Git, uh, for, from the code that is in my, in my Git repo. Uh, but really, it is independent of, uh, of each other. Um, so uh, it, it's required that you contend with that. Um, then uh, the, the project, what, what AWX calls the project, is basically my Git clone. I, I made I made a clone of my of my Git repo right on the like on the command line. Um, I'm right here. So this is this is just my my super simple um, repo for for this demo Ansible code, and the same the same repository is cloned um, by AWX, and you can actually. You, you you have to add it to to the list of projects that AWX knows about, and uh, and here I have I have configured that it should actually um, grab this from my GitHub, and and this is usually how you will go about things. So whether your automation code is on GitHub or on your own um, central Git repository instance, um, AWX will grab it from here. And uh, yeah. So finally, I just um, specified which playbook I want to run. Um, it gives me a drop down of all the playbooks that it finds in my repository. That gets a little unwieldy when you have lots of playbooks in the same repo. Uh, that's, that's a little UX uh, issue. Uh, we just have to deal with. Okay, so now we could just launch it again. Um, nothing bad should happen. Uh, I specified that AWX should ask me whether I actually want to make this a hard run or run in check mode. Um, uh, let's do a let's do a real run. Go. So, and same thing, um, we keep in a pending state for a minute, and the reason for this, you can see if you just uh, navigate to the list of all the jobs that are being run, um, 
what happens here in the background is, oh, it, uh, yes. Uh, I've made it so that automatically it, uh, AWX will take care of um, updating its, its checkout um, with GitHub. So it always does uh, the, the equivalent of a Git pull. And, and then we'll see if there's any change to the inventory that is, that is part of my source, right? The, the inventory with the machine for customer C is in Git. So AWX will look at that fresh and new. And not before these are done, uh, the actual run of the playbook can start. So yeah, it's again, it's, it's everything is a little slower, um, but there's uh, some strategic advantages that you gain by this, and I will get into that. Uh, yeah, speaking of, um, I didn't enter any passwords here. I just clicked launch, and it just worked. Even though this is the customer who has all these strict rules about oh no SSH keys and. Uh, sudo not without a password and, and, and even even a, a vault in there. Um, that works because AWX has all of this stored. I, I've entered the password, I saved it, and uh, it's, it's uh, saved in a database, encrypted. Uh, so that's a good way to go about it. Um, personally, I used to like have a, uh, a file in my home directory hidden file with the vault passphrase because I couldn't be asked to really uh, enter the, the passphrase for every run. So yeah, just like a SSH private key, I would uh, put a file in the home directory and it has the passphrase, but yeah, if, if anyone manages to like steal data from that hard disk, then the, the passphrase uh, is, uh, yeah, uh, is lost and uh, yeah, that's just bad news. And uh, this way, you, you really get a way to uh, have all these things uh, without such high risks of uh, losing um, that precious data. Uh, so yeah, you get to predefine what kind of playbooks you run. So it's no longer a jumbled mess of, oh yeah, let's look at my bash history, and oh yeah, in, in, li in 300 lines above, that was the run that does the right thing, so I can paste that to the shell again. Uh, no, um, all of this is managed, and it's also all recorded, so you can always go back, and like, I can see uh, what runs I did, uh, like, uh, let's show more details. Um, what I did uh, yesterday, uh, well, it, it wasn't set up yesterday, so. Uh, but I, I can see what I did uh, last night and uh, whether I was too, too tired to properly work, and it's all on record. Uh, makes for good transparency, especially when working in team, right? Um, that's, that's one of the big things. Like, you can, you can write logs when running Ansible on the command line, but every person who runs Ansible will have their own log, and it will be on maybe on their machine or just in their home directory. But I mean, how do you even find out who did what and when? Do you do you collect the log files from everyone, and even then you don't know what what precisely they did run, what what was the branch that they had checked out at the time, etc. So um, it's it's. Uh, much more streamlined in AWX. Uh, and you can also have cron-like uh, regular runs. That's pretty much it. Uh, you say, hey, every day at 12 o'clock, run this playbook, bam. Uh, easy. And uh, what I mentioned earlier, like with Ansible, it could always, always uh, happen that you run Ansible and at the same time um, your teammate runs Ansible, maybe from a different branch and, and everything jumbles over each other and it's, it's very hard to uh, figure out why your run failed and why uh, your colleagues run did a change that they didn't anticipate. So uh, yeah, um, AWX will, will try and make a good guesses about which things can run in parallel and which can, cannot. Um, like if, if, two, if two people click launch and target the same 
uh, inventory, the same infrastructure that they want to manage, then uh, AWX will make sure that one of these runs will not start before the other has properly finished. How does it work though? Um, it's, it's not super complicated. Uh, so there's, there's five major components that I know of. Um, I, I haven't tried hacking anything for AWX, but um, it's, it's uh, kind of, for, from, from the outside, it's kind of obvious what's in there. Um, so on the left, uh, you have the, uh, the, or the, or the HTTP stuff. Um, there's an Nginx and whatever else required to run the Python code that implements the API. And uh, there's all the, uh, the static components for the web interface, but the web interface also just in the background speaks to the same API that everyone else does. And then on the other hand of the whole construct, there's, there's uh, Ansible that will finally run, and it is all being orchestrated by RabbitMQ um, that decouples things. Uh, there's a memcache in there, uh, probably for performance reasons, um, doing its memcache thing. And everything that is persisted lives in a Postgres database. And that's all. And in the, in the most common setups, uh, each of this uh, will live in its own cozy Docker container. So this is Docker, 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 uh, if I count right. Uh, that's maybe uh, agreeable for some, others may not be so keen, but uh, you won't get around Docker for this. Uh, there's, so when I started with AWX a year ago, there were these four options. You just run Docker and download the containers and run them. You could use Docker Compose to make this easier. Docker Swarm was an option and Kubernetes. So uh, pick your poison. This has shifted a little. Um, you don't get to use just Docker anymore. You, you have to commit to Compose. Um, Swarm is no longer a thing, and now OpenShift is also an option. But still, everything will be in containers, neat and clean. Uh, and uh, I, I mentioned that I had a demo for uh, installing AWX, and maybe you thought I was joking, but I will actually, how much time do I have? It should be fine. Let's try it. Um, Okay, it all starts uh, from GitHub. Um, uh, Ansible AWX. Okay. Easy enough. And the, the nice thing about Docker Compose uh, is that you really don't need much. So on, on this Ubuntu server, I can literally get the pre-requirements just uh, from apt packages that are available, which is Docker, Docker Compose. I think that's it, really. Um, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So. And installing it is just two simple steps. Um, it uses it uses Ansible to to automate the installation process, and we all, all we have to do is touch some variables um, in the in the inventory here. Um, so it's not a lot. I think this is all fine. Um, you can choose what your containers will be named. Um, I'm fine with keeping my things in slash temp. Obviously not a very good idea if you want to uh, build a production setup. And um, yeah, some internal Postgres details. Um, I don't care. It's, it's just a container on this machine, right, that, that will talk to other containers. So I, I don't really care uh, what kind of passwords they use to talk to each other. Uh, I still won't use password because, again, this will be open on the internet. What's a good password? Uh, right? Okay. And um, the the secret key. So this is this will be what 
what encrypts all my precious SSH keys and passwords and stuff. So I would not like uh, for any cracker to be able to easily get at that. So this is usually where I do a little face roll on the keyboard. Um, should not be white space in here, I think. So whatever. And, uh, and yeah, for your production instance, you probably want to uh, uh, write that down, put it in the safe, and make it not available <coughs> otherwise. Okay, so. Uh, it should be it. Fingers crossed. Yay. So it skips over all the things that are Kubernetes and what have you. Wait, what? Oh, shoot. Uh, so I just bragged of how easy it was to get all the things that you need. So let's see how truthful that actually was. Docker, docker, docker. So yeah, in, in, in case it didn't come obvious, I'm, I'm also not one of those ops people who think of Docker as our uh, lord and savior. But I will say that it uh, makes the distribution of, say, things like AWX um, very pleasant. Because um, if, you, if you remember this, uh, this slide, um, these, these components in the middle, these run in upstream containers. So uh, the AWX didn't do anything to those. You, you run really vanilla uh, RabbitMQ, Postgres, and, and you don't have to worry if you, if you at all trust uh, Postgres to to build artifacts that are free of malware, then you are fine here. There's there's really not much to think about, and you also don't have the hassle of uh, figuring out how to how to set it up yourself. Uh, let's try again. That looks actually fine. And, and this will literally take a couple of minutes. So um, let's look at our existing instance again. Um, and I'll, I'll show you some more details. So uh, what I skipped over earlier. So within AWX, uh, and, I, and I mentioned how I how I had uh, previously added passwords and and my vault key and things and uh, in when when I de defined that this is a playbook that I want to run, um, uh, then I I just told AWX and here by the way you will need these secrets, you will you will need. Um, this this is saying OS Camp 2019 Vault. And this is the same for pass C. So one of one is a password for sudo, and one is a vault key. And I created these here in the credentials pane. And uh, and yeah, here it is. So so this is my my vault passphrase that I have securely stored here. And I also I also cannot get it out of here. It's it's basically write only. And uh, yeah. That's all there was to it. I I just I just pasted it in here. And there was that, and I could now, if if I rotate my um, encryption key, then I can just replace it here, and everything will start working again. Uh, yeah. Um, there's there's support to have uh, different organizations as they call it in AWX, so you, you can have some permissions management, so not everyone who uh, has access to your instance of AWX needs to be able to use your um, secrets that you put in there. Um, I haven't really played with that, but, um, but it's there if that's a concern. Uh, let's see how far the installation, oh, it's finished, fantastic. So um, is this running now? Uh, 
that looks good. Um, okay, where should it be? Uh, yeah. How do I get to it? No, right? It claims it's upgrading, so what's happening is that, that the initialization scripts are running now for, uh, for the whole Postgres database and what have you, and uh, it will come usable in a minute. And um, uh, let's look at the clock. Uh, all right, yeah, I got some time left. Um, next demo uh, will be to actually teach this brand new instance of AWX to actually run our things. Um, oh my. So essentially I will, I will uh, make a reconstruction of what was going on here, or maybe we just save some time and, and not go for a complex customer C who needs all the uh, fancy passwords and stuff, but just um, just use our nice and friendly customer A, where all we needed was an SSH key, and that was that. I I should have looked at how long this step actually takes. Um, what else is interesting? Are there any questions so far? Yeah, that's mean of me. Um, I know, you're shy. Uh, maybe look at the inventory. I, th I think we, uh, uh, we had a brief look into what was going on here in a previous presentation. So, uh, yeah. Um, all, the, all the customers, that I invented for the, this presentation are represented here. And um, since I, I did not really want to AWX to take full ownership, but rather it should all be driven by what I do in, or let, let me put this differently. Um, what I could do uh, is I could go ahead and add the hosts I want to manage here uh, manually. And I construct my inventory and that will be what AWX uses to talk to machines. Um, and you can of course script all this, there's the API, you can have any, any automation in the background that does this for you and, and manages your inventories. But since I'm that old school Ansible command line user, I have the inventory readily defined in my Git uh, repo. So instead, um, I create what AWX calls a source. And all this does, I, ca I can have several sources for this for the same customer, but I only have the one. The one is, hey, looking at Git, and uh, it says, hey, I, I have this project, which is my Git clone, and uh, this is its name in AWX, and please use this host's file um, for the customer A inventory. And yeah, uh, AWX is a little opinionated about what constitutes a, an inventory file. It, it found my files named hosts, but um, your inventories might be structured differently. Um, you can always here enter something else. Uh, like, I prefer actually to just name the directory. And uh, this way, for example, if you have a script in there that needs to run and that collects your hosts from, from any kind of external source, like uh, your AWS account or what have you, uh, then that also w just works, which is pretty nice. Okay. And 
if things work out, then we will be doing this in just a minute. Okay, what was it? Docker is great. One, two, three, four, five, I think. Yes. So, our brand new AWX instance that literally didn't exist a minute ago. Um, it already has one host and an inventory and a project and uh, this is all, um, you always get the demo inventory on a fresh installation. Um, one of your first steps will likely be to get rid of it because, yeah, I mean, come on. So, um, what do we need? Uh, step one, let's make our Git clone. Away with you. Okay. Uh, no, but what do I need to make a Git clone? Sorry? Yes, I need credentials. I need to access GitHub. Um, so, jeez, it's everywhere. Uh, let's upload an SSH key. Um, or actually, you know, that's better. So, what type of credential is it? Um, there's there's a couple of choices here, and uh, oh no, actually, that's right. I for source control, source control is a separate thing from just SSH key. So, um, I have the key here somewhere. Uh, what? What is this? Oh yeah. Nope. What's going on? Oh, wrong wrapper. Sorry. Uh, yes. Give me the key. And now I just put it here. It's uh it's briefly visible, but once I save it, it now won't show anymore. It, we just have this encrypted here. I could replace it, but that's it. Uh, all right, now to clone things. Uh, I have GitHub, so git at github.com uh, I think that's the name we will find that out uh, it's not a private repo by the way you can look at it if you want um, all right uh, and let's use the master branch and uh, Quite important, um, I like to tick this little box which says uh, says update, revision, or launch, which means when I click, hey, run a playbook now, then AWX will know, okay, uh, he wants to run this, and uh, the playbook is part of this Git clone. So yeah, I should go ahead and do a Git pull so that I really run the latest uh, version of this playbook from master. Something's missing, oh, the name. Let's go. Okay. Uh, great. It's already trying to make the Git clone. I can watch this here. Oh, needed. It's actually using Ansible to make the clone. I never, I never looked at that. Fascinating. So uh, here you can really look at what happened in order to, to fetch it. This is really only interesting when it fails for some reason, like the key is no longer authorized, or it's the wrong key, or the wrong name for the repo, whatever. Um, okay. 
we have a clone. Um, before we can run our playbook, I, I have to add the key once again as a credential because, uh, again, this is separate things. So this is now a machine credential, something that AWX will use to access uh, the machine. And uh, still here, good. That's basically it. Um, oh, actually, th let's also specify that this should be an, a, a root login. And if this was a encrypted key, I could also add the passphrase for the key here. So, yeah, it uh, it really caters to whatever needs you have in this regard. And there we go. Now, yes, I'm, you are broken. No problem. Go away. Thank you. New job template. Uh, customer A, much nicer. Uh, oh no, we don't have an inventory. That's bad news. That's bad news. So let's go through the motions. So you see, it's not as straightforward, right? If I would use Ansible from the command line, I would have just done a git clone and Ansible playbook dash inventory, and bam, you're there. So that would have been like a 15 seconds demo, and I'm standing here like five minutes typing all kind of stuff into a web interface. So yes, it's uh, there's overhead. Um, still, uh, you do this once, and hackety hack, and then profit. Dim -dim give me a source I like just calling it git if that's what it is customer a and again um, I really want to um, update this inventory when I launch a job so that everything's up to date and overwrite in order to uh, make sure that it's really just the way that it's written in Git and no weird leftovers from earlier uh, versions of the inventory remain. Let's see if I have forgotten anything else. Job template. Oops. Give me my inventory. I get to choose a playbook. Simple web is fine. And that's it. Save. OK, it's saved. And launch. When I started with AWX, this blue launch button was not in this view. Uh, you'd always had to go back to the list of available templates and uh, click a little rocket. And that was, that was weird. But they got better in, in a short amount of time. So um, I will also say that it's, it's, a, it's a project that is moving rather rapidly. They are, they are releasing pretty frequently and uh, there, there can be regressions. Um, and also you will, when you want to update AWX, you will be updating Ansible at the same time because you, you do not get to pick and choose. Any given release of AWX comes with whatever version of Ansible they have picked for it. So um, people who have made Ansible upgrades in the past know that this can be a challenge in and of itself. So word of warning. Um, what? Huh. Oh no, it didn't, it didn't accept the key. That's mean. I wonder why. Oh, oh, actually, actually I do know why. Um, I'm working with sudo, I'm, I'm not actually logging in with root. Uh, so, uh, my credential is all wrong. Um, 
I should actually use the account of A admin for customer A and uh, use sudo for privilege escalation to become root. And that should be it, because this customer doesn't need a pseudo password. And let's try again. We can just go to the jobs page and run the same job again with this little rocket. Come on. So this is what I, I talked about earlier. It, it spawned these two jobs to um, make the git pull and then read the inventory once more from git. And yada yada, I think it will work now. Um, I think I'm running, oh, I'm running super short on time. So uh, let's move through the rest of this. Uh, so there, there's other things, of course, as well. Um, some Jenkins can run Ansible for you. There's Rundeck, there's Foreman. Um, some people have their own little shit. Um, Jenkins, though, uh, is really just, you tell Jenkins to run Ansible commands. It's, it's not really integrated, it's just another command to Jenkins. Um, I think Rundeck is pretty good. I, I never used it, I saw the product presentation and it looked pretty solid. Um, Ansible support is a third party module in Rundeck, but that doesn't mean that it's not quality, so yeah, if, if Rundeck is interesting to you, sure. Um, Foreman, from what I saw, uh, looks pretty good too. Uh, don't build your own shit though. If, if you're really desperate to have an API for Ansible, then pick among the choices that are there. AWX, I think, is pretty solid. Uh, I mentioned some things that are not ideal. Um, back when I started, uh, as I mentioned, you couldn't just launch jobs from where you made them. Um, the, the cron thing that I mentioned, and AWX calls it a schedule, um, you cannot create it from the overview list of existing schedules, um, which cost me at least an hour of my life. Um, if you want to have runs that are in parallel, like you know that that big, huge, oh, we have a deployment window now. Let's let's do the whole patch cycle on all the machines and all the clusters, and you want to have all the clusters do this in parallel. It's not so easy, you have to jump to from ho some hoops to make this possible, um, but it's possible. Um, if you want to run from branch, which is important for testing, then you also have to jump through some hoops because you have to allow AWX to make a whole new clone and it's, it's a whole new project within AWX and, and you cannot just say, hey, use the same repo but check out a different branch, it doesn't work that way. Um, there's overhead here as well. Um, so yeah, that's what you have. Uh, if, if Docker is somehow tasteless to you, then I have bad news because you will be running Docker if you want AWX. Um, and if it's a no-go for you, then AWX won't work for you. Uh, again, this is this was the thing when I started, there was no SSL support. I had to get a little creative to get a proxy in there. Um, but by now, this is fixed, you can just put your certificate in there, it will work. And then by the way, uh, the Ansible vault, if you are like me and have all your variables as part of the inventories for, for your different sites, um, you probably have the vault encrypted files right in the inventory. And AWX cannot deal with that, not, not at all. Um, so I had to jump uh, through some hoops to get the vaults to, to the variables that are defined next to the playbooks. Uh, it's, uh, depending on, on your code structure, this is easy or can be very hard or impossible, so uh, not so great. Uh, might be possible in the future, but I don't know. Um, there's another thing. Uh, when you use the CLI, you can uh, do things like, what have we uh, launch? Right, so this was this was how I launched, and and I told um, AWX to do a check run, the same way I could say, please uh, pass dash dash diff to Ansible, and I can just do that, but 
um, since the template that I created for this job um, is not set up in a way Oh, it didn't work. Great. Um, the template uh, would actually need to make it so that uh, the setting, uh, which is, where is it? Here. I could, I could, like, in the template, say always show the diffs by flipping the switch, and I can make it so that I get prompted on launch. And this is where this di dialogue opens up when I click launch and I get to choose. Um, if I do not check this mark and get asked by the web interface and I, I launch from the command line, then the command line will accept this and it will make the API request and it will run though Okay, didn't have any changes, so you didn't get to really see it, but uh, diff mode was not, in fact, active here. Um, this is very awkward, for example, when you mean to run a check mode, but someone forgot to give you this option in the template. Um, then your check mode is just not a check mode. Uh, yeah, very awkward. Um, I hope they fix it eventually. Um, so yeah, uh, putting it all together, um, there is some significant overhead in terms of you have to make templates and inventories and what have you for other things. Um, and testing uh, will always incur this overhead for you. Um, on the bright side, you can write automation to do all of this work for you because there's the API and uh, it, everything can be scripted. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, your credentials are managed in a secure fashion. And uh, yeah, there's, I, I consider some of the things that you get, uh, like the log retention, to be pretty essential. And, and this is where, where Ansible is a little weak. Uh, but uh, using AWX um, really improves on that. Uh, so yeah, in summary, I, I feel that it really um, has enriched the Ansible experience um, to my team um, because, yeah, it, uh, it has made uh, cooperation much, much safer and more streamlined. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you. I have shown you this before, but um, can't hurt to mention it again. The unbelievable machine. Um, that's us. Uh, hey, where's my question slide? Um, there was one, but uh, yeah, uh, open to questions. Yay, question. Yeah. Thanks in advance. <laughs> About uh, securely managing credentials, um, I saw you type the key for uh, encrypting the credentials into a config file, so it lies on disk. Uh, is there any way around that? Uh, so you mean um, at, at installation time of AWX? On, uh, maybe at start time type. Uh, Providing the um, uh, the key via the API or something interactively. Um, that's For that's a good question. So, um, I mean, this is all just there's no magic here, right? All I did was run a playbook. So, um, one of these rules consumes this variable, where I define the secret. So I guess uh, you sh it should not be too hard to find the, uh, ah, let's actually see. Uh, secret key, secret key. Ah, this looks, this looks kind of promising. Like, I mean, I can, I can totally imagine that instead of uh, using this variable here, you, you replace this with some kind of lookup function, and I don't know, is, is there a lookup function that reads stuff from the command line? I'm not sure. You I, could I write sure. one. E you, could, you could just write one, even if there's not. So uh, I'd say yes. This is okay. simple enough. Uh, what I did in the past was actually, I have, a, I have a, 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 an Ansible role 
that will uh, set up AWX. And uh, this, this inventory file is itself templated. And the secret that is, that is passed to the uh, AWX containers at this point um, is itself uh, read from a vault encrypted variable. So first off, I, I have a vault where my secret is secretly stored and then I can do the whole line. It's a uh, secret within secrets, but... Uh, but once AWX has the secret, does it write it on disk? That is, that is a very good point. Like, I'm, I'm not 100% on that because my, my Docker foo is also super weak. Um, so the thing is, last time I checked this, um, it was a little scary. So if someone gets root here, they can just uh, the exact what's the this is the task container. So this is where all the Ansible runs, right? Uh, does this work? Am I in? Like this? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Super weak Docker foo. It's it's <laughs> embarrassing. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, this is way less bad than I remembered it. Um, what do we have? Hmm. I think this is fine. So in an earlier revision, I seem to remember that, that the secret would just float around in the environment within the Docker container, so that was super scary. But Docker has its own way of managing secrets. And uh, I mean, I'm not quite sure how this will, uh, I mean, it, it, like it has to be persisted somewhere and, and when, you, when you spin up the container, it will have to get at the secret from somewhere, so I guess if you, you if you lose the whole hard disk of the Docker host, then I would assume that the attacker can can resolve all of the secrets because I mean there has to be some kind of root secret that that Docker then uses to get at all the things, right? Uh, so you're saying um, the secret is actually persistent somewhere, somewhere on disk, because that's what I would not really like to have. I mean, I, I figure it has to, right? Uh. I, I, think, I think Docker protects this, the, the secret, the Docker host, then I would assume that you can also compromise Docker's own secrets. Again, not, not an expert here, but. It, Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I would say then the last question because we're a little bit over time and some people right. perhaps have to go home. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Hopefully a quite simple one. Uh, how to uh, prevent my colleagues to use vanilla Ansible when I have AWX running? Uh, uh, you don't. I mean, uh, except, I don't know, if you, if you prevent your team from getting shells and stuff, then I guess maybe you can. If like AWX has the only key, I guess that would be a way, but I, I have not yet been on a team where shells were not a thing. I mean, the, this is like this this grand vision. Hey, if, if we have this great automation for everything, nobody needs to shell into a machine anymore. Uh, like this this dream of of the super automated uh, data center. By, but I I have never implemented that. So um, so no, we don't. So just by organizational it, means. Yes, it's 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 really it comes down to trust and. Uh, and keeping a sane working environment. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, thank you very much, Felix. Please take the time afterwards, if he has time to, to ask him, that we can officially end it here right now. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks. Bye.